y'all. I'll do my best to do the chicken and waffles and the collards without it turning into one big hot mess. Cannot promise anything. You should see all the things that are in various stages of prep here. But I've tried to make it easier for me to just show you all of it. I have chicken tenders, two packages of chicken tenders. I think it's a little over two pounds. I gotta be honest, I didn't check the exact amount. I'm gonna be feeding six tonight. So I took the chicken tenders and I put them in a Ziploc bag, gallon Ziploc bag like this, and I opened up a carton of buttermilk and I poured buttermilk over the chicken tenders until they were completely covered and then I put them in the refrigerator. And I did that about two hours ago, two and a half hours ago. The recipe that I'm using for this particular portion says specifically two hours, but it could be up to 24 hours, which we're not going to need. So, I have already done one batch because I was going to need to do two pan fulls and you didn't want to wait through two. So, I'm going to put my breading in this Ziploc bag. I have already done one. I'm just going to add to the dredges of what was in from the first time and do a cup of flour. Put it in there cup of panko breadcrumbs and I think the last time I used breadcrumbs when I was doing the meatballs it called for panko but I didn't use it because it really didn't matter. This matters because the texture needs to be crunchy. I am not um, deep frying these. I'm oven frying them. I called an audible. I didn't want to stand at a hot skillet and pan saute them. So we're going to do it in the oven. It's a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Dump those in there. It's a tablespoon of garlic powder, which I liked. I like the, uh, the fact that there's big flavors in here. Tablespoon of garlic powder. And it calls for a teaspoon of turmeric, which I didn't have. I'm not sweating because I've also got lots of paprika in it. And I think some of the recipe notes says it wasn't necessary anyway. It was mostly for the color. So we're going to go with that teaspoon paprika, a teaspoon baking powder, my favorite happens to be Clabber Girl, but no one pays me to say anything about any of their products, as my husband will tell you. I'm not monetized. So, that was just a for your information thing. Teaspoon of baking powder. teaspoon of salt, just table salt, I'm not using the coarse salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Again, nothing fancy, just half a teaspoon of regular old black pepper. I think I've owned these things about 25 years. The outsides, not the insides. Okay. Say hi to the camera. Hello. <laughs> Dad wants to rent an RV and go to Lake Hanna. Okay. So, so clearly that's that's how many days we've been in quarantine. Rainbow we've been in, we've been in quarantine so long that my husband is talking about renting an RV at me like and going to Lake Anna. Otherwise known as telling his four other extroverts in his family that he has procured a tiny little space. For us all to be in to drive somewhere together. Like we're sleep seven. <laughs> Apparently it's sleep seven. Now he's texting me about it. <laughs> you can't make this up. This is real life. This is the insanity. No. This is real life. She will hate me, but go ahead. Why I've been contemplating the insanity of my husband, I have been mixing this together in the bag. Super precise, not precise at all. Just shaking it up, getting out a little bit of my frustration over thinking about being in an RV with my family. I love them, but quarantine's been long. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is get that chicken that's in the buttermilk out of the refrigerator. And I'm going to go over and put it on a tray that I am spraying with Pam. And... 
I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the chicken. Here is the pan. It is a metal cooling rack that I'm going to spray the pan. And it's over a dark baking pan. Dark helps because of the crunch factor. Or so they tell me in all the recipes. And I choose to believe them. So. I'm going to spray down my rack with a good old pan. It's going to go everywhere. It's probably going to look like I'm in a cloud. And the next thing I'm going to do is take out each piece of these chicken tenders and put them in this bag and shake them around just like shake and bake. Tongs, because I touched these things the first time to dump them in here and I don't really want to do it again. I found that the sweet spot for the ratio of wet chicken tenders and the dry stuff is three. If you do any more than that at a time in this bag, it gets goopy and it won't actually bread it. It just gets goopy. So, I'm going to close the bag back, shake it around. If I had a child that wanted to help me cook, I have a feeling this would be a fun thing for them too. And it's all those shake and bake commercials that we watched growing up. With the little kids very excited to tell them that they helped. Now, it's not nearly as gross touching these things now because they are dry with all the ingredients. And all I'm going to do is just lay them on this pan, on the rack on the pan, like so. Enough so they have some space between them, but you don't have to get all super precise about the amount of space in between them. And I'm going to put three more in. I did like do like I told you that test case, which is a good thing because I've never done this before since this was my bright idea to try and I'm simply going with it. So I can tell you in fact that it works and just as if I had an actual sous chef, I'm going to be able to show you a finished product so you'll be able to see what it looks like. In preparation for this, I not only marinated my chicken tenders in buttermilk, but I rough chopped some collard greens. I cut the center hard stalk out of the leaves and rough chopped them. Again, not precise at all, just making them in smaller pieces. And then I took some other collard greens that I found that were already cut, washed and in this handy bag. I'm going to add those to the ones that I got fresh off the, out of the field. And I'm going to cook those in a skillet on the stove, hopefully while these chicken tenders are cooking. And then the last thing we're going to do is going to be the waffles. And because I was Jensen for some sort of chicken cordon bleu-ish kind of a taste, I'm going to make ham and cheese waffles. And I have adapted a honey Dijon. I'm going to break my rule and put four in the last one. I think that's all in here. I have adapted, oh, there's one more, I'm just a honey Dijon hot honey sauce into a hot honey Dijon sauce because, like I said, I was jonesing for a little bit of uh, Paris, I guess, and the honey Dijon sounded good to me. All right, we'll see how five work in here. It was the bottom of the bag. I want to go ahead and get it in on the on here. I 
done the ham and cheese waffles before. Um, I served them before with a tomato and Vidalia relish. Sounds bizarre, but it was really good. Um, I just served the waffles hot and spooned the relish over the top of it. It was a good savory take on waffles. And actually, I've served them that way for um, an appetizer. If you need a hot, or at least not cold, it's kind of lukewarm, appetizer, you can cut the waffles into fourths. So you have just a little square, put a little dollop of the uh, Vidalia tomato relish, and that is something that I got in a jar in the pickle aisle at Harris Teeter. So it wasn't anything that I had to go to some special place to get. And I really liked that. But I was jonesing for some hot honey Dijon on this one. Okay. And these things are really dry. The coating with the breadcrumbs and the flour and the baking powder serves to make these dry, which is gonna make them crispy. The recipe calls for a tablespoon of melted butter to be poured over each one of these before you put them in the oven. And I gotta be honest, I'm all for some butter, but I'm already using it in the hot honey Dijon mustard sauce. I'm already using it in the waffles. Got copious amounts of butter going on here. So I decided that I was gonna hit it with some Pam. And it looks like from my last experiment, make sure I'm not missing any here, looks like from my last experiment that the pan really worked. So I'll show you how I made that work. Okay. These are, as you can see, very dry looking. And what I'm going to do is spray them pretty well with the pan. If you do an entire chicken breast, it calls for 20 to 25 minutes in the oven. Since we're just doing chicken tenders, and since I'm a little paranoid about how much I get my meat done, we're gonna do it ultimately for 12 minutes. But what I'm going to do is hit this for 10 minutes in the oven with some 425 degree heat, it's already preheated, and I'm going to get them out and look at any of the places on the chicken tenders that look dry. And I'm gonna hit that with a little bit more pan. You could do it with olive oil and a mister. This was just what I had, and it was the easiest thing at hand to do the trick, so that's what I'm doing. And it's gonna go 425 degrees for 10 minutes. This is what they look like coming out of the oven, and actually I thought that looked like pretty good color and pretty good crunch considering I just baked it. All right, what we're gonna do now is go over and get the collard greens going while we're waiting on the chicken. And you can see that I've chopped some collard greens here. My mom sent me this great recipe for collards that involves a skillet. This will probably look too small by the time I try to mound all the collards in it, but they will cook down. Four pieces of bacon that I have started to brown. The recipe is super specific about not browning it the whole way. Two of these, well, I should probably also tell you, there's supposed to be a yellow onion in here too, which would be amazing, but I'm the only sincere onion eater in my family, so I end up not putting it in if I have a choice. I think I can make these things taste pretty good with just the bacon. So it's four pieces of bacon and I use the Applegate Farms bacon um, and I've started it browning. I don't know if you can see that. Cut it into half inch strips. Now I'm going to put some garlic in here Salt, pepper, sugar, and hot sauce. So you know it's gotta be good. Let me get my measuring spoon for the garlic. Doing it right out of a jar. Okay, it's two garlic cloves, which basically is a teaspoon of the minced garlic. So I'm gonna add that in there. And salt. It 
is a teaspoon of salt. I am gonna add the coarse salt to this. Inexact, but I think it'll do the job. Now, half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. teaspoon of freshly ground pepper and in a second you're going to hear our cat who's decided that it must be time to eat so she's going to start talking to us. Not near the food please, off. Um, I'm going to put some sugar and some hot sauce. It's two tablespoons of sugar. I got that out over here. Two tablespoons of sugar. Smells pretty good, I gotta tell you. It does. Now we're gonna hit it with some hot sauce, and it says several dashes. What kind of recipe I like. Everything looks really good. Good. All right. Oh my gosh. I know, it looks good, doesn't it? Okay, I'm just gonna stir that around in here. Anything with your bacon, sugar, and hot sauce. <laughs> Bacon, sugar, With and hot sauce, man. And garlic. Oh my gosh. Actually, I'm not sure that sounds great together, but it smells really good. Those are like the fourth horseman of diabetes. You think? All right, I'm Jeez. going to hit it with, after this has gotten fragrant, which it's getting there, I'm gonna hit it with some apple cider vinegar. Until I'm down to, somewhere in the day 70s for quarantine. I say hit it a lot. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm feeling a little violent about all of this at this point, but. Okay. I'm going to get a quarter cup so I can add in the vinegar. And boy, does that smell good. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd have thought of that right off the top of my head, but it sure does smell good. All right, a quarter cup of vinegar. It started talking to me. I'm going to stir this around, making sure to get up the little brown bits off the bottom where I have cooked the bacon and the garlic. And we got six more minutes on the chicken. So everything's just rolling right along. After we get the collard greens in here, we're gonna add a cup of chicken broth. I didn't have any chicken broth. So what I'm gonna do is make some. I've got um, some hot water and some better than bouillon and we're gonna make a cup of chicken broth to add to this thing. Gotta love bouillon. <coughs> And yes, the vinegar is potent. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to add the collard greens. I'm gonna start with what I rough chopped on the board. It costs for two pounds of collard greens. The, the bag that I was able to find in the grocery store was one pound. And I'll have to admit, it does not have the stems chopped out of that. So, if it doesn't cook until they're tender, which it did the last time I bought this same product, then I will simply cut the biggest, cut the biggest stems out. I don't think I'm gonna have to, but we'll see. I'm all about ease and finding some that's already cut is a beautiful thing. I'm gonna wait till this cooks down just a little bit. I don't know if everybody are big collard eating fans here, but I love them. I was raised on them, and my children love them, for which I'm very grateful. We may have to actually do some um, chicken broth in here. 
Let me get the hot water going to make the bouillon. Hit it with some chicken broth to help this wilt down a little bit more. As you can see, I really packed my pan. I just rinsed out my teaspoon so that I can use it with the better than bouillon. And I'm going to fill this cup up with water. And it was very steamy out of the faucet. I'm going to put a teaspoon the better than bouillon in it. And then, I can't even tell you guys how happy being able to use this little tiny whisk makes me, but I'm going to use my little whisk. And I'm going to whisk up the better than bouillon into the hot water until I can't see any more big pieces here and it looks like just a cup of chicken broth. And then I'm gonna pour it on here. And I don't think it's gonna take these a really long time to make. Basically, we're gonna cook them, it sounds like, make sure I'm right, until they've lost their brightness and they are wilted. And then I'm gonna hit it with more vinegar and more hot sauce to my taste because I happen to know what my family likes you can do the same if you're not a big hot sauce person don't use it don't use much I would encourage you to try a little bit of it and see what you think especially something like Texas Pete it's really not as hot to me as something like sriracha but since I'm waiting on the chicken anyway I might as well sit here and babysit this for a second we love waffles, and for a long time, we had a tradition where every Sunday night, I would make waffles, and we would eat that when we came back from church. So, I'm just taking out some of the bigger stalk pieces that I see that don't have any green on them, because we don't need just the stalks for no purpose. So, I have tried out many different, um, huh, some kale made it in there many different waffle recipes. There is a lady, I love the internet, there's a lady that has a food blog who specifically talks about doing waffles because she says she's a self-admitted waffle snob, which I love. That was a chicken, let's look at it. Oh, it looks so good. Can you see that? And I'm going to try to show you where I see some dry spots on the chicken. Admittedly, there aren't many this go round, but I see some just on the edges. So I'm gonna just spray just a tiny little bit more on here. I know it doesn't sound like a tiny bit because it's forced out, but any of the places where it looks like it's just a little dry spot where the breading is doing its job, but it's still dry. I'm just gonna hit it with some more pan and now I'm gonna put it back in the oven for two more minutes. 425 degrees, very hot. Anyway, I found this lady's waffle recipe on her blog and I have not looked back. I now use her waffle recipe for everything concerning waffles. So she has many different types, savory waffles, different sweet waffles, but the woman is dedicated to her waffles. So I am using her ham and cheese waffle recipe. I did find out that one of her recipes is not enough to feed us, so I have to double it. So. I'm going to be doubling that. It calls for deli ham. I have a particular brand of um, organic, is it organic? 
I don't even know. It's all natural. It has no nitrites or nitrates in it. It doesn't have added color. It comes from animals that have not been injected with antibiotics. Um, I'm saying all this like I understand the reasons why all of those things are good and not bad. And I'll just tell you that I like the way that it tastes. And I like my food with as little added to it as possible. I like to do the adding. So, okay, it looks like we're getting close on some of this. It's still pretty bright, but there are some pieces that are not. And I'm gonna try to see if I can make it where you can see it better. So, I think you might be able to see how some of it's getting a little wiltier and some of it's still pretty bright. I'm just going to I'm just going to cook it until all of it looks that darker color. But since I want to go ahead and get my uh, waffles going in here in just a second, I'm really just standing here until the chicken gets completely done. That two minutes goes down, and I'll get the chicken out. There it is. Beautiful. I'm gonna put this over here and let it cool for a little bit on the pan. And it looks like the collards are doing their thing and they smell really good. And I'm really glad they smell so good. But what I'm gonna do is reduce the heat now to a pretty low temperature. I'm putting it on two. I'm gonna let it hang out for a second. I'm letting my chicken just sort of chill right there and settle and let the juices settle in the chicken. I mean, I want them crunchy, but I don't want them dry. So we won't do anything to them for a few minutes. And we're gonna go over and start the waffles. Okay, and I'm gonna do my best to get this so that the, so that you can see everything. I'm going to set the brownness on my waffle iron at a little below halfway because I know how hot my waffle iron gets. And it gets pretty hot. And I'm just gonna unwind the plug and plug it in here. Now, I think I've told you the hardest part about cooking anything like this dinner for somebody is getting it all done at the same time. Sometimes I do better than that than others. But I generally speaking like to know what things can hang out and be at room temperature, what things can be, need to be really hot, and just go from there. Okay, my waffle recipe is two cups of flour. I've already added four cups because I'm doubling it. A teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of salt. for four teaspoons of baking powder. Three teaspoons is a tablespoon, but four makes it a little odd to try to do anything with that. So I'm just gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight teaspoons of baking powder because I'm doubling it. It calls for one tablespoon of white sugar. I'm gonna put it two. So, I'm gonna use the tablespoon I was using for the sugar, not the one I was using for the garlic because that would probably be gross. One, two. I'm just gonna stack this up here in case I need to do another batch before this is all over with. Now, I'm going to whisk that together. And the collard still is good. No burnt collards, I don't think. All right, I've whisked this together. Now I'm gonna add my wet ingredients. So, the wet ingredients 
Oh, I'm gonna have to melt some butter too. Okay. Um, I'm gonna add the milk and eggs first though. I've gotten out four eggs already. I need to get out another measuring cup so that I can make sure and have one for my milk too. into the measuring cup instead of into the mix because you never know when you'll end up with a yucky egg that then will ruin all the rest of your mix. Now I'm positive that I'm supposed to be doing this in some super specific order. So much milk to so much eggs to, I don't have time for that. So we're going to call it all good. All right. So the original recipe said two eggs. I've got four. And I'm going to do the milk. It calls for one and a half cups of milk, so three cups of milk. While I'm smelling this, I'm just gonna go over and stir it just to make sure I've still got good looking collards over here, nothing that I'm ruining. Still look good, they still look pretty bright in places, so I'm going to cook them just a little bit more. All right. I love recipes that have melted butter in it. I mean, is there anything better than melted butter? Oh my gosh. That was two cups. Hit it with the third. It's supposed to have six tablespoons of melted butter in it. That means I need 12. Eight tablespoons is in one stick or half a cup. So I'm gonna use a stick and a half of butter and just pop it in the microwave in a measuring cup and melt it down. So, let me see if I can make it fit in here. Brennan, you're a little obsessed with tacos. I'm kind of worried about you. Got spinach waffles. I don't know. Chef Tell drank, didn't he? Maybe if I were drinking while I was doing it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, there's one stick. I'm bored, Brendan. That's what I am. So I'm doing this to alleviate my boredom and not cook by myself. going to mark this at the halfway mark, the butter, and cut it. Now I'm going to stick this in the microwave. Okay. Okay, while I'm waiting for the melted butter to be a factor, I'm going to start mixing all of this together. Now the thing that this lady does differently with her savory waffles that was not in the other recipe that I tried first is that she also uses the sugar and the vanilla in it, which we will put the vanilla in in just a minute when we do the butter. Um, she also adds the sugar and vanilla which I don't know that I would have necessarily thought of in a savory waffle, but this lady's got it down to a science. So I'm just following her lead. And I did a dry run on my sauce earlier and I had a taste test. McKenna taste tested it for me and she said I nailed it in one. So it's really good. See, I've already gotten that mixed together some. There's the microwave. Let me see if it's melted. Looking good. After I've added the milk and the eggs and started to combine, I'm gonna add the melted butter, which is just a beautiful thing. Um, melted butter. And the next thing I'm gonna add is the vanilla. And I have been a bacon fiend around here, so I have almost got, gone through all my vanilla, and I had a little bit of a panic 
earlier because I thought, oh no, I don't have any more vanilla, but I found some. So it's all good. It's all good. All right, how much vanilla are we gonna add? We are going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract because it calls for one. We're going to add two. And based on how the collard greens are smelling, and I think I'm probably going to be able to tell from looking at it when I turn around that it's time to take those off the heat in preparation for adding more hot sauce and vinegar to them. All right, the next thing we're going to do to these waffles is going to involve ham and cheese, which I love. <laughs> Jenny, you're welcome anytime. The worst thing about all this is that I haven't seen my people in too long. All the extroverts in my house feel that way about the lack of their people. All right, let me look at the collards real quick. Ah, I'm going to show you what the collards look like so that the next time you do them, you'll know what to look for. There you go. That's it. You see they're all that dark green. They're not that bright green. And all I'm going to do is turn the heat off. And park them back here on the back burner for just a minute. There's my chicken still hanging out. So that we can, <laughs> Scout's reminding me it's getting closer to five o'clock. I'm sure you'll all be relieved to know I've got a timekeeper over here. Okay, next is the ham and cheese. I use the 100% natural choice Hormel. It's Hormel, okay. The recipe calls for a quarter pound, which would be four ounces. The package that I got happened to have eight ounces in it, so I just used the entire thing, and all I did was chop it up into little pieces like this. So what I'm gonna do is add the ham and cheese. So I'm gonna pour that in there. And the next thing I'm going to add is the cheese. And the cheese is a Vermont Sharp white cheddar. I was going to do Swiss, and then I realized I didn't have any. So, welcome to cheddar. Cheddar was what I used before in this, and it's what the recipe calls for. So I know it will be good and tangy as well. And I'm going to pour one eight ounce package of the cheese in. And I also have a block of cheese that I am gonna use if I need to add more. If I need to do like another um, batch if we run out of this. But all I'm gonna do is mix this around. Now, my waffle iron is a four It's like this. Can you even see? It's four square waffles. It takes a third of a cup in each of the little squares. So I'm gonna drop it by a third of a cupfuls into each square and cook it till it beeps at me and tells me it's done. But what I wanna show you before we're done, and after we do this, we'll be done, is this beautiful sauce. I'm very excited about this. Okay. This is the Hot Honey Dijon Sauce. And all I did was adapt a butter glaze that the person who did the chicken recipe um, had for the tops of their chicken breasts. All I did was adapt it and add Dijon mustard to it and adjust the seasoning a little bit. So I guess I just took what they had and ran with it. I'm gonna make another batch of it for you because I don't think what I've got here is going to be enough, and I think I'm gonna heat it up and make it a little more um, liquid. But what I'm gonna do is melt a half a cup of butter. So, half a cup of butter is one stick. It's eight tablespoons. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave again, my handy dandy microwave, and I'm gonna melt it. Actually, go ahead and use the one that I already used. 
I'm gonna go ahead and melt it. And what we're gonna be adding to it is just wonderfulness. Got this to mix it up in. We are going to be adding a quarter cup of honey. So I'm just going to pour a quarter cup of honey. I hear you, Scout. It's not quite time for dinner, babe. And waiting on the butter, which the butter is probably done now. It is done now. A quarter cup of butter. Sorry, half a cup of butter, quarter cup of honey. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Actually is not as spicy as you would think. Half a teaspoon cayenne. This is a quarter, so I'm just gonna hit twice with this. Half a teaspoon cayenne. And a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Pull my paprika back out, get my tablespoon out. Tablespoon of smoked paprika, that's what gave it that orange color, that orange red color. And an eighth of a cup of Dijon mustard. So I'm going to get the Dijon mustard out of the fridge. And this is not Grey Poupon standard, this is just whatever they had in the grocery store. So my quarter cup has a little line in the middle that tells you where the eighth of a cup measurement is and that's what I'm gonna use. I'm just going to do this, eighth of a cup. My waffle iron is probably gonna beep at me again to let me know that I have been neglecting it. And I'm gonna take the whisk out of the other one over here mix it up because that's what it was used for earlier put this aside so I'm just going to mix up all of this together basically it tastes like a spicy honey mustard I'm going to um, heat this up on the stove when we're ready to eat, which we're gonna be ready to eat in a little less than an hour. This is so great because I can let this hang out and do the waffles to order. So I can just, it just takes a few minutes for the waffles. The chicken is gonna be about room temperature and I'm gonna heat the sauce up so that people can drizzle the sauce over the top. It's pretty viscous. When it, when it sits because the butter gets harder. Right now it's pretty liquid. See? Now this, that's been sitting out for just a little while, is much more viscous. So I'm gonna heat it on the stove until it's retained its, it's uh, let go a little bit of its viscosity and it's gone, gone back to this more liquid, liquid form. So I'm just gonna pour this in together so that I can just, see there's my waffle iron telling me that I've ignored it too long. Now, I will probably spray a little nonstick cooking spray, the pan, into the waffle iron just because there's always that possibility that the cheese sticks. And if the cheese sticks, I'll end up with a just nasty mess, which I don't want. But normally, I don't have to spray cooking spray on my waffle iron. Okay, that's the whole kit and caboodle. I will post a picture of what it looks like plated and I will post the recipes along with my notes. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. And I 
think, should I do one waffle so you can see what it looks like, baby? I don't know. Let's try one so you can see. I'll just go ahead and do one because I gotta admit, I wanna see it. I've gotten everything else done. Now we're about half an hour from eating, so I might as well get the whole payoff. But I'll just do one. Oops. And I'll go ahead and spray it. And it's very thick. Yes, I know, Scout. And my cat is really unhappy with me that I am not feeding her, but that I'm standing here cooking. So, there's that. I'm sorry, I have no idea how long this is. It's probably pretty long, this video. But for a whole meal start to finish, it's not that bad. All right. I'm gonna put that in there. It doesn't take long until it will be beeping at me. Um, I have not come up originally with any of these recipes. I don't know, we could probably argue about the sauce. I might have changed it enough that that's now mine. I don't know. Um, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be publishing it in my own cookbook. But um, I sort of went online and looked at different recipes until I found what I thought worked together, which I think is pretty fun and it's a great part about Pinterest because I use the Pinterest boards and I use Pinterest search to find some really cool food bloggers. That's how I found Damn Delicious, who has a couple of the recipes that I've posted up. Um, it's also how I found the Waffle Lady. She's fantastic. Her name is, her blog name is, um, I think it's the Barefoot, Bare Feet in the Kitchen is her blog name. And she just does amazing, amazing waffles. So uh, I would highly recommend that. And I still don't have a sous chef. So there's that. But maybe some of you are lucky enough to have children that will function as your sous chef. I use my waffle iron a lot. I have a great um, crab cake recipe that I found that's a skinny taste recipe that is waffled crab cakes. You make crab cakes, you put them in the waffle iron and you close it and it's fabulous. I also make cornbread in the waffle maker. My in-laws introduced me to that. But you just make your regular batch of cornbread with your cornmeal, um, eggs, oil, butter, whatever you use, and you put them in there. That's great for eating with chili. As a matter of fact, I've done some chili bowl-ish kind of things with cornbread. So, all of that is possible with a good waffle maker. And we spent most of our married life with one tiny little round one that we did everything with, and it worked just fine. So I love waffle makers. I'm thinking this is gonna beep at me in just a second. I don't know, does the watch pot never boil and the watched waffle maker never beep? Oh, and if I were going to shred the cheese just by hand, I just got the block of cheese, and I would just do it at a very coarse shred. And this is the, the hand that I used. It comes in that cardboard box. It's nothing fancy. All right. It smells really good. It smells really good. Uh, my mom was telling me about the collards, that she ended up putting quite a bit more vinegar to them. We're used to eating collards with vinegar. So she probably, she said she may not have added another quarter cup, but she added more than a splash of vinegar. So I'm anticipating that I will be adding a pretty good amount more vinegar and some more hot sauce, just because that's how we like them, a little spicy, vinegary. And of course, who isn't anticipating getting to the bacon in that? I am. This is taking forever. Maybe it just feels like forever. Ah, uh, it's getting there. I just didn't wait long enough. You can't, I could have written that. Okay, it's ready. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to get another spatula so I won't scratch my waffle iron. Get a plate out. There it is. I don't know if you can see the ham and cheese in it. I can tell you it's really hot. But there it is. Okay, now I'll post everything, including pictures of what it all looks like put together. Thanks for watching. Have a great Friday night.